My name is David Montesano, and we're going to be discussing improving your transfer admission outlook, getting off the wait list today. So how does the whole thing work? Well, and, and this is kind of, we're talking about admit rates here. So when you see an admit rate out there, uh, I just want to let you know that it's a blended rate. It doesn't mean that you're going to get in at that rate. So here's NYU, just kind of a sample rate. Um, it's a little bit lower right now, but just to kind of give you an idea, um, I think, well, actually, this could be fairly accurate for transfers. I have to go and look again. Um, but uh, NYU, say it's 30%. You're going to have athletes that are recruited, and it's largely Division three teams at NYU. Um, and so that doesn't require the highest level. You know, if you're, if you're, you could be a great player, for example, but not a Division one player and still get on NYU's team, their tennis team. Uh, so then um, you, you could have athletes, underrepresented minorities, people who are Native American, African American, Latino, or Latina. Um, those are the primary groups that are underrepresented, for example. And some Asian you know, groups possibly, right? If you're Hmong or something like that, that could definitely help you. Um, and then, and then also, uh, so, and then legacies, people whose parents might have attended NYU as undergraduates, not as grad students. And those, those three groups, those flags and tags are going to get in ahead of everybody else typically. And roughly they're going to take up about 40% of the spot. So if you look at kind of the result after that, you know, the, the, the admit rate for everybody else goes you know, the chances, the spaces go down, goes down to about 20% roughly. So this, just think about this at every school, um, and it's more prevalent at private schools than public, for example, because of the legacy factor um, isn't so much of, a, of an issue at, at public schools. But just to kind of let you know, that is, th these are all things you also have to consider when you're looking at colleges, okay? Let me take another question here. Um, let's see. How does one stand out as a UC to UC transfer applicant? Oh, that's a great question. Um, okay, so UC to UC, wow. And I'm wondering which UC you're coming from. Maybe you can let me know in the notes here. Um, but, uh, I'm, you know, because there, there's, there's one in particular where people tend to transfer a lot from. And, and actually, there's, there's, there have been programs set up, um, and that's UC Merced, to kind of transfer... Uh, to some of the other UCs, um, and so they're pretty used to seeing Merced transfers. I, I think the number one thing is that you have to have a reason for it, a significant reason for doing it, right? Um, not just, I want to go to a more prestigious UC as I see it, you know, UC as I see it. Um, that's not a good enough reason, because again, they're all pretty much the same in terms of the quality, and you should really realize that. Um, but in functionality, right? I mean, some are different. UC, San, UC um, Santa Cruz is, and UC Santa Cruz and UC Davis are the ones that are a little bit different. Um, UC Davis is a, more of a polytechnic. It's an agriculture and engineering research kind of university. It's more like Cal Poly or Cornell in the Ivy League. And then um, UC Santa Cruz is more like a liberal arts college. It's, I mean, it's, it's a bigger version and it has engineering. So it's kind of more, more and more every day like the rest of the UCs. But it was founded at least on the principle of having more student-teacher interaction, smaller class sizes, and residential campus, um, where people lived on campus and interacted with the professors more, much more, and fewer kind of commuting in um, happening. So anyway, um, if you can let me know which school you're transferring from and to, that, that certainly would be interesting to know. But in general, um, you know, you really have to sort of give them a good reason for transferring, I think, and a great reason is that they don't have at your school what you want to study. And they have it at this other, the new school. I mean, that just makes sense, right? But then you need to have to, you need to sort of prove that you're either in that field pretty heavily already, you know, uh, or you've got some, some credentials or qualifications to, to really pursue that new, new area of study. Okay, it doesn't look like it. Any other questions? I'll give, I'll give somebody one more chance here if there are any others, um, kind of last minute ones. It doesn't look good. You've been a great audience, and I want to say thank you so much for your time. And um, best of luck to you in transfer. I know you can you can get off that wait list. So just focus on some of the principles we talked about today, and you'll be very successful. I think. All right. Take care. Thanks.